Hello and welcome from the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences, where we've just discovered who has received the 2010 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. With me to discuss this prize is Professor Lars Tellander, the Chairman of the Chemistry Prize Committee. Professor Tellander, thank you very much for talking to us. Could we begin by you telling us who has been awarded the 2010 Nobel Prize in Chemistry? Well, the prize was awarded to three scientists, Richard Heck, Eichi Nigishi and Akira Suzuki. And what, what did they receive the prize for? They developed the palladium catalyzed cross-coupling for making carbon-carbon bonds in organic synthesis. And we'll go into more detail about this, this process, but just to ask a general question first. Why is this reaction and other reactions that chemists use so important for chemistry nowadays? Because if you want to synthesize more complicated natural compounds, such as the ones you can isolate from bacteria and different fungi and so on, then you need this tool because otherwise you can't make it and you cannot get enough for testing and medicines and so on. So it's something that chemists use to construct compounds from scratch? Yes, and especially complicated natural compounds consisting of very many molecules. Then you need this tool, otherwise you cannot make it. And what makes palladium catalyzed cross-coupling so important for chemists? Because it can form new carbon-carbon bonds, and this is the, the essential thing for all uh, molecules in life. They consist of carbon, and you have to create and, and break carbon-carbon bonds. And here is a very good way of making new carbon-carbon bonds. So it allows chemists to make more complicated chemicals than they could before? Yes, exactly, with good uh, efficiency and so on. And so what examples do we have of chemicals that chemists have created using this method that couldn't have been created before? Well, for example, we have in medicines, we have a, a, a great number, they say even 25% of all uh, medicines that are made, synthesized today, are made by one of these reactions. So it's a huge impact on, on the pharmaceutical industry. And so how does this work? Well, the th trick is that carbons are rather unreactive by themselves, but if you bring them close enough together, then they can react. And palladium has this magic property that it can bind two different carbons and make them come very close together, and then they react under very mild conditions. So it, it brings carbon atoms together, which allows them to, to react and bond yes. together? Yes, exactly. And so. Could you take us through the, the key breakthroughs that each of the three laureates made in developing this process? Well, the first one was, was HEC that was inspired by some industrial product uh, chemistry in, in Germany which showed that you can use palladium as a catalyst for different uh, reactions. And he further developed that and made it into a process that worked for making carbon-carbon bonds in many different examples. And then the other two made, because his reaction cannot be applied to all kind of compounds, so then they complement this by finding other ways so you can make it broader, so you can work with all kind of different uh, organic compounds. And what, under what conditions does this reaction work? It works under mild conditions, as you say, you don't need any high pressure or high temperature or something, so it can it's a mild temperatures and, and not strange uh, uh, solvents and things like this. And that makes it, it, it doesn't create as much waste product and, and like uh, normal chemical synthesis, you get a lot of things you have to take care of, but boron and zinc and so on, they are not very toxic. So it's an ideal thing for scaling up in industry. And could you give us a sense of when these discoveries were made? When, when was this method developed and refined? The first one was almost 40 years ago, hex reactions, and the other ones was about 30 years ago. And then it took all the way up to 1990 before people really started to realize how great these things were. And then it has just developed very quickly. And so you mentioned pharmaceuticals, but could you give us an idea of, of other chemicals that are made? Yes, a lot of agricultural products, you know, for example, to keep the fungi away from grapes and, and things like this. And then in plastic industry and in, in electronics to coat chips and to make light emitting compounds and so on. So it's a very general thing. You can use it all over. And so you mentioned that the work was done decades ago and the prize is being awarded in the year 2010. 
what developments have they been that made the case for this subject to, to be the prize so convincing this year? Well, we have, of course, uh, looked at this for quite a long time now. And, and, uh, but it is a very complicated field and very many players. And it took us quite a while to really sort out who was the real first ones and the ones worthy of the prize. So that's why it took us some time. So there, so there were many players involved. Um, so, and you say it took some time to make this decision. So could you sort of go into what the, the committee's rationale was for for focusing on the achievements of these particular chemists in question? Uh, I mean, of course, we, we make searches, you know, we get nominations and then we order investigations from different uh, earlier laureates and so on. And then we try to get this together to a, a coherent picture who should be the best one for this year. And, and we should uh, give the prize to the best uh, discovery or improvement in chemistry. And we think this year, this was clearly this thing. If you look at the three laureates' achievements, you say that those three achievements from each of the laureates were the key moments in the development and refinement of this technique. Yes, and they were quite independent. They haven't been postdoc to each other or something, so they were completely independent in different parts of the world. We think this is very great. And my final question is, have you spoken to the laureates? Yes, we spoke to them through the telephone this morning. We could reach all three of them and they seem to be very satisfied. And you even got, got, got in contact with Professor Heck, who's in the Philippines. Yes, yes. Yeah, he, he was a little shocked, but uh, he has recovered very quickly. And, and, and the reaction of the other two laureates? They were very happy, both of them. They, Suzuki said he had no idea he would get it, so he was surprised. Professor Delanda, thank you very much. Thank you. Visit NobelPrize.org to find out more information about this prize and to listen to ex exclusive interviews with the new laureates. You can also keep up to date with regular news updates from our Facebook and Twitter channels. And for the very first time, we're giving you the opportunity to put your questions to all this year's laureates on YouTube. Visit www.youtube.com forward slash the Nobel Prize for more details. That's about it from this live webcast. Tomorrow it's the turn of the Literature Prize. We'll be broadcasting that announcement live at 1 p.m. Central European time. But in the meantime, it's goodbye from all of us at NobelPrize.org.